On the Palestinian side, actually, there are two main issues that are uh, preventing the reaching of an agreement. One is, of course, the compromise. Palestinians didn't show any kind of readiness to compromise on the same territory, which is, of course, Israel. Uh, most of the arguments are about the West Bank and Gaza, but uh, we are not asking them what do you think about uh, the refugees and bringing back the refugees to the region. While we think that they are talking about the West Bank, but no, they are talking about bringing the refugees inside Israel. This is something that is completely, completely unacceptable. Second issue is the settlements from Palestinian both society. It's a red line, and they call it in Arabic sumud, which is a steadfastness. For us, it would be a difficult, but not completely impossible issue to dismantle not all of the settlements, but at least a part of them, once we reach an agreement. So it is most on the Palestinian side now to say, yes, we would like to have a compromise. And if we are compromising on what we have today, which means two nations on two different piece of lands, I guess that 75% of Israelis will accept it tomorrow morning. Judging from the past, there were about 17 times that Fatah and Hamas were brought together into a room in order to reach an agreement. The broker changed, but not the people from both sides. Once it was Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and once again Qatar, and, uh, and Turkey, the problem is that the dispute between Fatah and Hamas is too wide, too deep, and I don't see that even though there are signs that they are going to have a unity government, it is something that will probably will disappear in the next couple of days. And even if they are going to establish a unity interim government, it won't exist long. Why? Because I guess that what happened in June 2007 won't let those wounds uh, recover. There's a lot of blood inside this unity. In Arabic they call it fitna, which is almost civil, uh, civil war between two parties in the same people. And I am very pessimistic that this type of unity will hold. Actually, the, the Arab Spring in a few countries that it happened, haven't uh, brought good results. If you take a look at Egypt, you see that nothing changed, only to the worst. Uh, people were expecting to see it changing to the better, and it didn't happen actually. Or Libya, for example. The Libya situation is very, very bad. In Tunisia, I guess, I guess that people were expecting to see more democratization, liberalization, free press, free countries, and this unfortunately doesn't happen. So I don't know, but we may have think that probably there should be an interim uh, or uh, some kind of regime that will pass the old regime into a new one, not Immediately, in a few days, you would like to take them 400 years ahead, and this does work like that, and actually the results in the Middle East are not so good. But one thing is so-called the light at the end of the tunnel, is that the young generation, those who are cooperating through satellite and cell phone and internet, will be able to understand in Libya, in Iran, in Israel, in Egypt, in other places, that today borders have no means. Today other commodities have no means. Today we can cooperate, we can 
do whatever we want. The only thing that should be used is a good will. If we have good will, youngsters from Israel, from Arab countries, from Iran, from Turkey, to cooperate and do good stuff for the future, nothing would prevent us.